Hi, thanks for joining me again. Um, I'm continuing with my watercolour painting series for beginners with this video. And the last one we looked at putting on a flat wash and this time we're looking at putting on a graduated wash. You'll see as the video progresses that I use this method, the graduated wash, um, for producing an effect of um, mist or low-lying cloud um, at the base of hills, for example. Uh, it really can be quite effective. You start off in exactly the same way you would a flat wash. Um, in this case though, what you're going to do as you come down the paper is you're going to be gradually adding water to that pool of colour on the right. So the wash, as you can see from the one above that I've just done, is going to get gradually paler. You don't need to mix up too much paint in your initial pool because you're going to be diluting it as you work down the page. It's good to keep your board and the paper that you're working on at quite a steep angle in this case. I wouldn't put it on an easel, but make sure you've got about 30-40 degree angle on it. Make sure also that you keep that bead of paint on the leading edge always there. Load your brush every time you go across and you can see now as I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm adding water to the wash as I'm going down. You'll see when I reach the bottom of this small square that I'm not going back to the pool all the time because there's a bead of water there that is quite large and I don't need to go back but I am going into almost pure water to finish off so that it does become really light at the bottom. At the very end, dry off your brush and then just pick up any excess paint that's flowed down. A graduated wash is a really great way to, to paint a sky. Um, if you do look at skies, you'll notice that they start off quite dark at the top and always get a lot lighter near the horizon. So it's a very natural way of painting a very simple sky. So what I'm doing here is painting a few hills, a simple landscape on this um, little graduated wash that I've painted. Um, as a tip, if you are painting hills, don't outline the top of the hills because what happens is quite often that, that paint in that, that first stroke that goes across and contours the top of the hill will dry um, before you've actually put another layer of paint on underneath it and you'll get an outline on there which won't look very nice. Try and work very quickly and don't outline the top of the hill. Try and use the brush on its side to give you a nice bold stroke. So I'm having a go at another one here. I'm going to work a graduated wash down like on the other one. I'm going to bring the water in pretty quickly on this one because I want it to sort of um, give a misty effect. I'm going to put a hill in front of it and I want it to look like there's some mist. Um, bring your wash right down to the bottom, always. Um, you can wash it away with water as you come down, but if you don't and, and if you leave it, then you probably get a line on there which will be difficult to, um, to get rid of. Right, so here come the second lot of hills in front of those distant ones and I'm painting these hills in exactly the same way as the ones I did at the back. Uh, the paint is a little bit stronger but I'm bringing the wash again right down to the bottom. I'm going to let the washers thoroughly dry and then I'll paint just a quick little sketch of a foreground on the front just to sort of illustrate how sort of nice and atmospheric these washers can look in the background.
try and suggest um, a lead into a picture so um, I'm just suggesting a little path or a little road in the foreground here. The colours I've been using today are Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine and because I'm working very small um, the brushes I was using number six number eight round brushes and um, a little rigger probably about a size two for the trees here. Now when you feel confident and you've done lots of practicing on the graduated washers uh, move on to a bigger piece of paper. If I was doing a flat wash on this size paper here I would mix up a lot more paint to start off with but because you're going to be diluting the paint as you're working you don't need to mix up too much. Now I'm going to be painting another graduated wash, um, this time I'm using a size 10 brush and the Burnt Sienna again. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes so you can relax, listen to the music and watch me paint or you can skip forward just a little bit. I've already painted the very distant hills on this and now I'm coming in with the hills that are more in the foreground. Um, it's a bigger sheet of paper but I'm working exactly the same way and it's really important to keep that um, damp edge on the bottom of the, um, the hills that you're painting there. If it does dry up at all then you're going to get a line, there's no avoiding it. So use lots of water and keep loading your brush and try and work quite quickly. Uh, the quicker you work, um, the better your wash will be. And another thing to remember is always to bring it right down to the bottom of the page. You'll see as I reach the bottom of this painting that I'm basically painting with just water. This leaves you a nice pale background um, to put the foreground work on there. This is another little exercise that I did and when I was painting the hills at the back there um, the wash went wrong and I put the too much water in too quickly and it sort of cauliflowered up towards the, um, the top of the hills there but this is um, a sort of a good example of how mistakes can work for you because um, I think it looks quite sort of authentic there with that mist it's sort of billowing and um, I quite like the effect so always 
carry on working. If you think something's gone wrong, if you think you've made an error, it can in actual fact look quite nice when you paint something next to it, in this case like the, the hills in the front of it. Um, so don't be, um, don't be too quick to, um, to throw your work in the bin. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, just keep going and you'll find that quite often what you think are actually mistakes and you don't like will actually come together in your painting and look quite nice. You can see what I've done here is painted a sort of nearer range of hills onto that same painting. Um, there are a few little white bits showing which I didn't particularly want there but um, if you go back and try and correct things like that um, you're just going to mess up the nice wash that's on there. Um, I think this little painting looks quite atmospheric and if you practice with these graduated washers it's quite an easy way um, as I said, with practice, to get this effect of mist or low-lying cloud. Um, I don't really think I emphasise the fact that each layer on here dried thoroughly before I put the layer in front on it. Um, you can use a hairdryer if you want to save time during this process. Well, there we are. I do hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. There really are no shortcuts when you're coming to learn watercolour painting. You really, really must practice a lot. The more you do, the better you will become. So if you did like um, the video, please give me a thumbs up. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be um, doing some more videos shortly, and I uh, hope you will join me again. Till then, bye-bye.